For more on this, we're joined by Dr. Farhan Boti, family physician and Michigan State lead for the Committee to Protect Healthcare. Great to have you on. On Monday, President Biden saying the new variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. Do you agree? Uh, good morning. I do agree. Uh, it is still premature. We don't know much yet about this new variant. We don't know if it's going to end up becoming the dominant strain like the Delta variant did, or we don't know if it's going to end up dying off like the Lambda variant did. So right now, while people should be paying attention, people should absolutely not panic. What do we know? Because I keep hearing, you know, we need two more weeks. It feels like um, the consensus is that um, it is more contagious, but maybe not so severe in terms of, of illness. Uh, is that kind of the gist that you're hearing, you know, that maybe some of the cases are, are mild? So here's what we know. We know that what makes this strain unique is the fact that it has more than 30 mutations on the surface protein. And the surface protein is that protein that the vaccines target to create antibodies, to give us protection. So what scientists fear is that if you get fundamental changes in that surface protein, then eventually you could end up with a mutation that is resistant to vaccines. That's the fear. Now, we don't have any data to support the idea that the vaccines aren't gonna work against this particular variant. We don't even yet know if this variant causes more severe illness compared to the other variants. Uh, time will tell, but for now, it looks like still the best thing that, that we can do to try to limit the spread of this disease is make sure everybody gets a vaccine and make sure everybody avoids large gatherings indoors and, and wears masks during the wintertime especially. The recommendation now from the CDC is that everyone should get that booster shot. For people who are out there and, and thinking, well, we're, should we wait and see if there's more data about how effective these boosters are, are going to be or how effective the old vaccines are going to be against this new variant? Um, any insight there? Is there a reason to get the booster right now? The reason to get the booster is clear. A, there's no harm in it. And B, what we're trying to do with the booster shot is simply trying to increase the amount of antibodies or memory cells uh, in your immune system, inside your body, so that if you are exposed to any variant of COVID-19, you'll have the best chance of fighting off that infection without getting you know, moderately ill. Um, what we know for certain is that vaccines prevent severe illness and they prevent against hospital hospitalizations and deaths. But that doesn't mean that people who get the vaccine can't get, you know, a cough or runny nose, at least, you know, some shortness of breath. And it doesn't mean that they can't spread it uh, to others, although not as rapidly as unvaccinated people can spread it. So uh, if we were able to, not just here in America, but especially around the world, get more people vaccinated, that's what's going to stop new variants from emerging because variants happen when the virus spreads from one person to another, copies itself, and eventually you get errors in that in that replication or in that copying process. So we really need to get more people around the world vaccinated, not just here in the United States. Um, on to the, the politics of this, uh, more than 40 countries have already issued travel bans uh, to, to parts of Africa. The World Health Organization criticizing that move. Um, we haven't done it just yet. Uh, what do you make of travel bans? Do they work? Uh, and how likely is it that this variant's already here in the U.S.? Travel bans are a Band-Aid. The world is small. People come in and out. People travel. It is quite likely that, you know, we have an index case here in the United States because this variant isn't just in Africa. It's across Europe. It's been found in Australia. Uh, so uh, most likely there are people in the United States that traveled from those places already here. That being said, if you institute a travel ban for a week or two, it's certainly not the end of the world politically because it allows us some time to uh, get more data, to understand the variant better, to understand uh, if the vaccines, uh, you know, how effective the vaccines are against uh, preventing severe illness against this particular variant. Uh, and so it'll just allow us some time to confirm 
the science. And that's important too. So doing something is better than doing nothing. Although we know that travel bans in the long term aren't what's going to get us out of this mess. Um, it feels like this couldn't come at a worse time. Just it, it's simply, uh, especially where in New York, in Michigan, people um, gathering indoors now. It's getting really cold. Um, the holidays are upon us. We're about to do some traveling for, for Christmas and, and get together with family. Uh, given this variant and the uncertainty, as people are making plans, any advice? My advice is please, please, please get the vaccine uh, please wear a mask when you're inside in, in gatherings with other people. Please pay attention to hygiene uh, because all respiratory viruses are spreading more now that it's cold outside. We're seeing more cases of flu. We're seeing more cases of RSV amongst children. Uh, all things that we didn't see as much of last year because people were doing a better job of wearing masks and limiting gatherings. Uh, so we know that vaccinations are absolutely safe. We know that uh, that that wearing a mask reduces the spread of respiratory droplets from person to person. So these are all things that are really important as we head into the heart of winter time. All right, uh, big thanks to you, Dr. Farhan Badi, family physician and Michigan State lead for the Committee to Protect Healthcare. Appreciate your time this morning.